as more and more of us go back to the office and having in-person meetings, of course, observing COVID-19 protocols and hopefully keeping safe social distance and wearing masks, we are also having these meetings with multiple people who are still working remotely. The result of that is that audio during meetings becomes critical and most of us are not getting the greatest sound. You can probably pick up right now that this isn't the ideal sound, especially if we wanted to use this meeting or this presentation for broadcast purposes. Enter the conference speaker. Now we've had these for many years. Companies like Plantronics and Polycom have been putting out uh, conference table speakers that sit in the middle of a table with multiple multi-directional microphones picking up everyone's voice clearly and sharply. But that hasn't always been feasible for the small office or the home office where you bring multiple people in for meetings with multiple other people. Enter Polly with a SYNC 20 from Plantronics. Very compact, beautifully packaged, without being ostentatious. Portable, quick start guide with a Bluetooth pickup dongle if you don't want to use USB. Incidentally, certified for Microsoft Teams. This is the portable carrier. Portable, lightweight, customize in Poly software. So you can download the software as well. Let's take that off for the moment. And then turn it over and you find there's your USB cable built in. So you can use Bluetooth or you can plug it in by USB. PC connected. It lights up beautifully. This cool uh, blue light gives a futuristic vibe with the purple Teams uh, logo as well, giving the sense that this is part of the new future that we've all been talking about. Symbols that tell you exactly what happens where. You don't have to guess with this. It's not like a lot of devices where you've got to read uh, the manual. You can read the quick start guide, but this is going to get you going quickly. And it sits then in the middle of the table, wherever you are, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a small office, or whether it's a boardroom table um, in a larger office. And you can carry it in your laptop bag with you. So your laptop and your conference speaker become a combined portable office. It's what I call the everywhere office and the everything office. I'd like to welcome a guest to Goldstock on Gadgets, Rakesh Parbu, Chief Executive Officer of Westcon Comstore for Sub-Saharan Africa and the Chief Technology Officer globally. So it's a privilege and an honor to have you on this uh, show, uh, Rack as you prefer to be called, and also unusual in that you'll be talking about a device that is seen as a semi-consumer device for an organization that's involved in enterprise hardware and software. Do you want to tell us a little more about why you are excited about the new device? Yeah, thank you, Arthur, and thanks, uh, thanks very much for having me uh, join you today. Um, you know, it's, as you said, it's not something we, uh, we do very often is have devices in our world that, you know, are also something a consumer can use. Um, but, you know, working from home, and I am, at, I am working still from my home office, um, the, the office brought in, we brought in a lot of these uh, devices. They sent one across for me to use. And um, I've been using it now, and I'm using it right now, actually, as we're talking. And um, it's become something that's very, very helpful for me. I'm not really uh, personally a fan of wearing a headset all day. I like to be able to just sort of have conversations. And given that I spend the majority of my day um, on video calls, uh, with people, you know, across Africa and around the world. I like to be able to just have a free conversation. And um, so this new Poly device has been uh, really helpful for me, you know, just to be able to have it down in front of my monitor on my desk and um, make it a much easier experience. It's called the PolySync 20, and it's one of the few enterprise-level devices that looks like a consumer 
uh, gadget and uh, the functionality, the ports, uh, the buttons, all incredibly simple, very unusual in this uh, space. Is that partly what appealed to you about it? Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it really is a plug and play type device. You've got your USB cable, you know, that you can plug into your laptop or your computer or just into a power source to, to let it run. It's got Bluetooth. Um, if you want to use Bluetooth as the way to connect, that's actually how I'm using it at the moment. Um, it's sort of just into a power port and I'm on a Mac. So I use the Bluetooth uh, connection to my Mac to, to communicate. Um, you know, and it's, it's got an on and off button on the side and on the front, you know, just a very simple um, ability to mute, change the volume um, and, and make a call. And then it has some nifty little features around as well that are integrated with Microsoft Teams. Uh, and there's a programmable button on the side that you can use to do whatever you want. I've just set it to tell me the battery level, just in case I need to know. But you can do a few other things with it. Um, and so really nice looking, sits very nicely. When it turns on, it lights up, creates a nice glow. You can easily see when you're on mute or not, because we all do it where we are uh, in the start a conversation and we happen to be on mute. Um, so very, very handy features like that. Um, I use it predominantly for, uh, for work and for, for talking, you know, doing the Zoom calls, Teams calls, uh, WebExes whilst I'm at my desk. But I have also tried it out uh, with my phone and uh, using it as a, you know, just a conference speaker uh, from a phone or an iPad. The most startling thing about it, I think, is that when you open the box, there's the note that tells you that it's certified for Teams. How did that come about? Uh, Polly, um, for many years, has been working very closely with Microsoft on all of their devices. So they've always had a lot of integrations, um, even going back to the Skype and Skype for Business days, and now you know have evolved that into Microsoft Teams, just to make it a little bit easier so that you know, the settings show up a bit easier, that um, the buttons can be programmed to do things, you know, to start a Teams chat, uh, just to make it, you know, really simple um, to be able to use it with, with something that, you know, in our organization and many companies, you're using Teams all day long as one of the mechanisms to communicate. I was impressed when I switched on um, my computer after plugging it in and Teams opened up and up came a notice to say, that uh, there was this device that wanted to help us uh, talk on Teams. That's an unusual experience. Um, will it work the same way with other uh, video conferencing software? In fairness, I haven't probably checked it out myself. Um, you know, I'm using it now um, and I've used it with Zoom and WebEx and um, it, it immediately appears as when, it, when you're doing the audio check before you join the meeting, it immediately appears there as a device to use. Um, I'm not sure how tightly integrated into other platforms it is. I know that, you know, that's why the button on the front is even, a, it's a Teams logo. So it's very, very integrated with Teams, but it works just as well with everything else. So it's not like you feel like you've lost anything if you're joining a Zoom call or a WebEx or um, even just a, a WhatsApp um, call and streaming the audio um, from your phone. One of the cool things that came up uh, when teams was activated by the device was uh, the invitation to catch up on voicemail that might have come in while I was away. That's uh, quite a starting feature. And what it tells us is that uh, smart design of these kinds of uh, gadgets can also enhance the software that we are using for remote working. Absolutely. You know, it, it makes it just easier to do some of the things that you're doing on a daily basis and prompts up the right notifications. Um, it comes with, um, you know, there's a software you can download from the Poly site um, that, uh, you know, allows you to tweak it a little bit as well. So you, you can choose what you want some of the buttons to do or whether you want it to give you audio messages as to when you're on mute or just a tone. Um, and, you know, it also um, supports the noise cancelling features that um, Zoom and Teams have integrated into the products in terms of uh, making sure that if you know a dog's barking in the background or uh, someone's using the vacuum cleaner, which happens all the time, that you know it doesn't pick up those sounds either. Despite it having an extremely impressive array of mics, and that was the thing that really appealed to me is how well it works. You know, if you 
you want to stand up and walk around a little bit, it still hears your voice really clearly, you know, and I've tested it from being up to two meters away that people were still able to hear a conversation. Um, and that's really impressive for such a small desk device. That I thought was also the highlight of the device, the fact that it has uh, omnidirectional mics and that it picks you up from a few meters away so you can walk around the office exactly as you say and be more comfortable in the meeting without anyone else experiencing the discomfort of voices coming and going but also if there are multiple people in the office catching everyone's voices at the same kind of uh, level which is also a great frustration of uh, video conferencing uh, generally is that something that uh, polycom uh, especially set out to address absolutely so you know th there are there are three models of this. There's a, the 20, which is the small sort of personal one, um, and there are two others that get larger for bigger boardroom tables. But the point being that you sort of put the device down um, and multiple people can use it or as an individual, but you don't have to move it around to get it closer to people so that they can you know, be heard clearly in a meeting. Um, I'll, anecdotally, I'll tell you how I figured that out. It wasn't because I read the data sheet. It was, um, I had a family around for, uh, for my uh, for a birthday and uh, the other half of my family uh, lives overseas and um, so we decided to do a Skype call with them and I thought I'd be smart and I'd bring up my iPad so that they could sort of see us and we were all sort of sitting around a coffee table so not you know probably a couple of meters apart uh, like a small meeting room and um, I decided to bring this speaker out and connect it via Bluetooth but what I, I kept doing was sort of moving it closer to the family member who was talking the most, just because I thought that's what was needed. And then at one point, it was sort of sitting next to me and diagonally in the total opposite side of the room was my sister who was talking. And I, I asked my sister on the other end of the line, you know, did you hear that clearly? She says, yeah, I heard it perfectly. She's obviously sitting next to you. Uh, and she was probably about three meters away from me at the time. So that was actually how I realized how how really smart the, the microphone array is built into the little device and what makes it so appealing for even using it for family calls and or even you know potentially a teacher using it in a classroom where they can still focus on students who are maybe in front of them um, but those who might be doing remote learning. That's amazing um, and also in South Africa many of our meetings at in the homes especially are interrupted by the hardy doors outside so there's probably a strong temptation if the window is open for people to actually use it as a missile for uh, the hardy dars as well. But you wouldn't recommend that, I'm sure. No, probably not. It's, it's pretty solid in terms of the device because it's got a, quite a battery in it, which also can, you, you can use to charge your phone. Um, but yes, um, I often have to explain what that sound was when I'm on calls with people internationally. You've never seen a hardy dar in their lives. It's the most distinct sound. We all know it, but... Uh, They've, they've never heard it or seen it. And a lot of them keep thinking it's a strange phone ring that I might have or something, you know, and I have to explain to them it's a bird on the roof. <laughs> so the PolySync 20 doesn't cancel out the Hardy Dar sound. Uh, that maybe needs a higher level of smart intelligence? No, I think, it, I think with, if you turn on the features on Teams, and I haven't, in fairness, tested that uh, with the Mac version of Teams, but... If you turn on the, the audio cancellation, I think it will pretty much block out everything around you. A hardy dark proof uh, speakerphone, that would be incredible. Um, what do you, do you think is going to uh, come next in this category that's going to further enhance the remote office? I think what we're seeing is there's a lineup of products that, that start to integrate the video into these um, sort of speakerphone and mics. So one unit that has a very high quality uh, HD webcam that has, uh, you know, the speakers that you would see in this PolySync 20, as well as the microphones. And I think, you know, there's talk about that launching fairly soon, um, you know, in the next, probably in the next quarter. So I think, you know, the devices are getting higher quality for home or small office use, you know, what was... What was traditionally you were you know you were relegated to either a headset or you know the capability of your laptop's mic and speakers, um, I think are being elevated. You know you could you could take some of these devices and put it on a on a uh, a small TV screen and use it in, in for a bigger environment if you want. But they they also work just as well in a home environment, especially if you're spending a lot of time on calls. You know, and if that's what if you're 
requirement is to interact with people daily and be able to see them clearly and hear them clearly and you know come across professionally um, we're seeing Poly really address that market in terms of the devices that they're building out. This speaks uh, quite powerfully to a theme I've been uh, looking at quite a bit in my writing recently, which is the idea that uh, the remote office or the home office or what I've called the anywhere office now also needs to become the everything office where it's not just about participating in a webinar, but in fact hosting an entire event but from the small office, from the home office or from the beach for, uh, for that matter. And these technologies will make a major contribution to uh, that trend. How do you see the future in that context? Um, you know, Arthur, you couldn't be more correct in that in terms of running events from home. Yeah, I, was, I was one of those people who's very used to working in the office. If I did work from home, it was to catch up on something and I usually sat around at the dining room table or somewhere else. I didn't have a space to, to, to call a home office. You know, uh, the pandemic has obviously shifted that. And, you know, we, I've upgraded the technology in my home to be able to work more effectively from home over the last couple of months. And that includes even, you know, a better chair because you're sitting in it now all day long and a better monitor on your desk. So I've upgraded a lot of the personal technology to be more professional. But I've probably run 20 events now over the last year, some as small as, you know, 50 people and some up, uh, presenting to over a thousand people uh, from this very same desk using the same technology. And, you know, coming across clearly, you know, to, to the people who are, who are on the other end of those screens and, and watching those events, the feedback has been very, you know, really phenomenal around how, how people have been able to engage in a different format. We're no longer used to standing up on a stage and, and presenting on something. It's all now done from, from the home chair. So I want to ask you not whether you think we will all go back to the big office, but whether we should go back to the big office. I think the answer is probably lies somewhere in between. Um, I personally don't think I would go back to that you know, full five day routine. I, I spend so many days of my uh, weeks in in calls internationally that I used to go into the office to do them. But now I could just as easily do them from home because that's what I have been doing for a year. So I, I think we're going to see a much more flexible office environment. You know, different companies will have different uh, ways of addressing it. But but for us, we're definitely looking at a more flexible type solution at the point when we can all you know, go back to the office by choice. I think we also can allow people to have the choice of when they, when they need to stay at home. Um, you know, and we've seen that with people taking leave uh, to look after someone in the family or a pet or children who you know, need some homeschooling. This whole new world allows us to be a lot more flexible in that way. And as long as we have the right connectivity and the right technologies, it's doable. Finally, Rack, uh, may I ask you which is your favorite virtual background for meetings? <laughs> um, uh, I haven't, uh, I must be honest, I rarely use virtual backgrounds, um, but the funniest one, I don't know if it's my favorite, was my, uh, my, uh, my boss who's, who's based in the UK you know, his background, we'd all seen it. It wasn't a background, it was his office, which, you know, had a picture, it was one picture that used to be just above his shoulder. And so what happened, I think his wife did it, but she took a picture of sort of the, the perspective of his office. And we all joined a call one day, looking like we had the exact same background and were sitting in his chair. I thought that was really funny. So the, what I've seen more is the, the humorous ones, but I've really turned on the, um, the backgrounds, if I do, it's probably more the blurred one. If there's just something happening around me, you turn that one on just to, you know, keep the focus. Um, but I've seen a lot of humorous stuff in the last year as well. Sounds good. It also sounds like we both try to keep it real uh, rather than virtual while we're operating in the virtual environment. Uh, Rack, many thanks for joining us. Uh, I wish you guys great success with the PolySync 20. Thank you so much, uh, Arthur, for the chat. It was, it was great to be part of uh, the show today. Thank you very much.